Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yeah. coming today and for your passionate testimony. And I will add, as early as the turn of the 20th century, Mexico was trying to limit the use and sale of marijuana. So I don't think it's necessarily confined to this country. I can only imagine, however, the pain of having family members who appear to have been targeted solely because of their race or ethnicity. The pain of knowing that their employment possibilities were taken away. So I, with, as a mother of five and grandmother of four, I can appreciate that. What concerns me as we go forward with this is those very children as we normalize this. You talked about science. We increasingly see good, sound science that talks about the terrible damage that can be done to the developing brain in our young people. I, I know we will take every step possible to keep it out of their hands, but currently, according to the National Institutes of Health, more teenagers use marijuana than smoke cigarettes. I mean, it's a wonderful testimony to our anti-smoking campaign because we know the terrible harm and death it causes. And I know you don't want, as much as you want job opportunities for your children and your family members, you don't want them to suffer from the use of something like this. So I, I want this to be part of the conversation. And part of me says, if we're going to do, do this by all means, offer the opportunity to those who've been affected. But is that the best we can do? When you look at our growing manufacturing industries, um, in my part of the state, Electric Boat, Pratt & Whitney, United Technologies, simply testing positive once will foreclose those employment opportunities. And my sister and her husband are merchant mariners. They're subject to random drug tests. Now, you know, we may say that's a federal level issue. issue. We should get that taken away. But we're here now. So I'd like you to address <coughs> your concerns, if there, you have any, on what this will do, particularly with our very young and impressionable um, residents of the state. Well, I too am a mother of uh, four. <laughs> I have triplets that are 17, so I have people, kids right in yeah. the middle of all of this. And, you know, my, first of all, this is strictly about adult use. Um, we are not proponents of children uh, uti utilizing cannabis, but if you, uh, if we're able to have funds from cannabis to reinvest in communities, like New Haven has very little to no after school activities, very little to no alternative um, coping mechanism c courses for children and things of that nature. And so we can do those kind of things with cannabis funds. And in states that have legalized, we've seen a, a decrease in teen use. And the bottom line is that it's illegal and kids are using now. You know, so if we're able to provide and develop programs, um, prevention programs and provide education and alternatives to um, just sitting around and doing nothing. I believe that we can engage children in the proper way, teach them about the science of the plant. There's so many elements of this. this. These are business opportunities. This can spark interest in children to become engaged in science and chemistry and biology and horticulture and all of these things. So there's many elements that can be instituted in a responsible way where we can protect our children from things that we are not fully aware of, but there is research on both sides, you know, and so with the ending of prohibition, we can develop more research and be, and, and have more studies to see, to really determine how uh, cannabis use affects teens and, and, and educate kids accordingly. And I think, you know, how we spend the funds is going to be a discussion for another committee. However, whether or not it's the best we can do, like we can do amazing things with this process. If folks in your caucus, in your party were to join us in drafting this legislation, we can do a lot of great things. As far as Cure CT goes, we did draft our own bill that has a full legalization bill. That's part of my testimony submitted. And you can find it at curect.org. But we put 51% of the funding into after school programs for youth. And if it 100% went, that would be fine with us too. So I 
think the more that we can be talking about how can we maximize the benefit for our communities rather than whether or not we should be moving forward on this is going to open up opportunities for young people in all kinds of ways we haven't even considered yet. Thank you. And uh, you know, th we could have this conversation all day long because <laughs> I think part of the conversation has to be the social cost. Mm -hmm. Again, um, the editorial from the Robert Troyer in Colorado, their research is showing color, uh, marijuana use among teens is now 85% above the national average. He's also looking at the revenue piece. And uh, granted, if, if, if we could be confident that this revenue is actually going to go to where you want, I might look at this differently. But unfortunately, and I, you know, I'm, I sit up here, so I have to take some of the blame, even though I'm only in my second term. Too often, mm -hmm. revenue streams don't go where they're supposed to go. Again, Colorado, it's less than 1% of their budget. OK, here, it's what their population is twice ours. So let's say we get $100 million a year. There, the cost of enforcement, the regulatory costs, leave very little for those incredibly worthy social programs. And I, I worry, too, and I, I question the commissioner about this, on the black market. I mean, if I'm just Googling why consumers prefer undergrown growers to legal market, Colorado becomes the first state to dedicate marijuana revenue to out, you know, eradicating the illegal market, the black market. Massachusetts, Boston Globe, February 2nd, why most of the sales taking place in, Ma in Massachusetts are in the black market. We aren't going to get the revenue you want. The, I mean, there is a financial incentive not to pay the tax on things. So as I say, I, I don't want to monopolize. We have so many people wanting to talk. But I get your concern about wanting justice. I get your concern about wanting equity. But let's do it in a way that provides you what you want and doesn't extract a huge social cost on the state. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Representative Mag, I add on just Please. to that. Um, one of the issues that I think we have to discuss is that we don't have to imagine the social cost. We don't have to um, pretend to think about it. We don't have to make it up. We already know the social cost. Um, I said my uh, friend to the left of me already talked about um, his own uh, journey and what that social cost was. I can't enter my barbershop on any day and not have someone talk about um, their lack of ability to be able to get student loans because of a conviction or um, applying for a job and having um, to have to talk about a conviction or um, the many mothers and, and aunties in my church that have had their, their sons and nephews and nieces and, and daughters um, incarcerated because of the, of, of the war on drugs. We don't, we don't have to imagine. That's my normal story. I said every week I go into the barbershop, I have someone remind me of that social cost. Um, it's painful to go into my barbershop and have my friends say that we always knew you were going to make it because the opposite side was they always knew they weren't. Because of that social cost, because of the lack of job opportunities, because we have disproportionate um, and equitable education opportunities here in the state of Connecticut and throughout our country. We don't have to imagine the social cost. We know what that social cost is now, and what we have the opportunity to do is address it in an equitable way and move forward together. Thank you. And I, I agree. You're right. We know the social cost. I suppose the difference of opinion is, is this the best way to address it? And in, I, I, as I say, I have, would have no problem expunging the records. We've already made possession of small amounts illegal. But as I can, I'm not going to monopolize this. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for caring so much. <laughs>